Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This is The Valley, a vanished world from a forgotten time. Here on the Welsh borders, a farm is being run by five hand-picked experts as it would have been nearly 400 years ago. Using only resources available in the year 1620, they are laboring for a full calendar year, turning the clock back to rediscover a way of life from an age gone by. It's November now. Winter's almost upon us. It's our third month working on the farm. And we've got most of the fruit in. Leaves are gone from the orchards. But uh, we've still got a couple of big jobs that we've got to get out of the way urgently. We've got to get the pig slaughtered. So we've got it salted, smoked and away. And even more urgent than that, in some ways, we've got to get the cow shed finished. So I need these rods for wattling the front wall up. And we've also got to get that thatch on, otherwise it's going to leak like a sieve. The leaves may have fallen, but the autumn sun is still shining. Perfect conditions for getting the cowshed finished. Today's main challenge falls to Alex and Fons, making a 17th century style wattle and daub wall. What we're doing is we're creating a latticework of rods um, into which we're then going to pack the, um, the daub. Um, and we're going to do it from both sides as well. So what happens is you'll have the, 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 the main rods coming down here, which we're going to obviously fasten in with these holes that Fonzie's making with the auger. We've excavated quite a few examples of um, Watland daub walls that have um, either been burnt or collapsed, um, but obviously never built anything like it. So, so I'm just going to strip this down. If I just take it off about here. Yeah. But that's quite a thin one, and what I'll probably use these thin ones for just putting it at the end here. I'm surprised at how easy augering is. I mean, you have to apply a little bit of pressure to initially get the screw, screw bit on the end to bite. But once it's taken, it just pulls itself down. Should we try, well, should we try and stick one of these in? Yeah. Top first. So just good to find out what the best technique is before we start. I'm trying to bend it rather yeah. than... What, are you going to drag it along, yeah? Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, that's fairly sturdy, I think. I think I'm, 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 I'm that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. OK, well, should we go for another one? <laughs> Why not? Don't be hasty. <laughs> no, not too hasty. While Alex and Fonz are busy outside, Ruth and Chloe are preparing for the big day ahead. It's a moment they've been building up to all autumn, slaughtering one of their specially bred period pigs. Right, Chloe, let's move this barrel ready? to the floor. Oh, mm. oh, he's okay. pretty dirty. I think we give him a swill out first. Oh, yes, look at that. November was the usual seasonal time for killing pigs. Farmers avoided having to feed them over winter. The valley porkers have fattened up nicely. So local butcher Neil James has come along to act as slaughterman. So I've got a nice big bowl of blood? Yes, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, you haven't spilt much. Good. <laughs> Excellent. I think he's uh, finished bleeding now. And there was a local pig man that used to go to the, the, the small Odins and people's property to, to kill their stock. Obviously, he would know what to do, not to put the animal in too much stress or whatever, so it's done... Uh, you know, humanely as such. Yeah, and, so. isn't, and doing them where they live in anyway, they're, not, they're much, much calmer and but, just nowhere near as frightened, are they? Well, they're in their own sort of habitat, before, you know, yeah. so they don't get frightened and um, carted around in, in, in vehicles or anything like that. Exactly. Fresh blood from a newly killed animal is really useful. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to make blood or black puddings out of it. Um, 
it's the main ingredient. I've already got some oats that I've warmed, uh, cooked through and they're ready to put the blood onto it. And they'll steep and then later on when I've cleaned these intestines out, we'll use those as the skins to put the, the blood sausage in. So black puddings. I'll take this. I'll give the chaps a shout for you. Hang on. Alex, Stuart, can you come and give a hand moving this pig, please? Back in Stuart times, it wasn't simply a case of sending your pig to the abattoir and getting back pork chops wrapped in cling film. Pig killing and processing was a major job, with everyone on the farm having to lend a hand. Indoors, the pressure is on to get the brewing vats ready for the pig's organs. I'm going to use a little bit of salt in it as well, just to be on the safe side, to make sure that we're, we're not going to put anything into any bacteria or anything into the, the, the meat. But you do need to scrub it well to make sure you've got every little bit in all the cracks in the wood. All right, we could do to swill this one out now. Ready? Two. Oh, they're heavy, aren't they? An old saying goes that the only part of a pig not eaten or used was its squeak. That's his intestine. Um, it's, it's a casing, really. You can fill the sausage into him, you can fill the black pudding into him. And that's cool. Smells good now. Do you bake sausage? I, I, yeah, I love sausage. Uh, I was actually considering having a bacon sandwich for lunch today, but. Um... Yeah, oh well, you wait five minutes, we should um, have some black pudding for you. Inside you is what's called a pig's call. That's that, that, the... I've come across an old recipe. It looks like a hairnet, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. We used to always say in a trade, you pull it out properly. Um, it looks like a bit like um, South America, stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> I bathe always in it, I'm afraid, but that's uh, my big fingers. It's very, very popular, it's very nice on, on faggots. I actually put this on faggots myself, just to make it you know, nice and moist. So I'll put it on the side and we can use that later, maybe. Take his little sweet bread out. It lies between the legs. It's a ball pig, so he has um, two sweet breads, hopefully. And um, the sweet breads, um, I suppose, are his um, bollocks, really. There we are. They, uh, that's where all the action happens. It's a delicacy. People like it. Um, but let me just open him up for you. Like. Ouch! It's uh, it's just it's a nice white meat, really. And all I got to do is just push it up like that, and it should pop out of his skin, hopefully. Very nice fried with uh, salt and pepper, a bit of flour. With the first stage of butchery over, it's time for Alex and Fons to start threading rods. They're beginning to realize just how many are needed, hundreds of them, all cut on site to construct their wattle and daub wall. It's something that um, is used fairly universally, um, especially on, on buildings of this, this stature, really, uh, a, a mere cow shed. We are intending to leave some form of ventilation at the top because one of the big problems was pneumonia with cows. So we need to get the moisture out of the cow shed, otherwise it will get into their lungs and we have very sick cows. I can see this being one of those satisfying jobs from you know, when you get the whole thing done at the end of the day. Mm. It's quite tough, isn't it? Yeah. On the pig front, it's not just a case of butchery. They need to get the bristles off, and the period breed, a wild boar Tamworth cross, is much hairier than modern pigs. They have no modern machinery. Instead, they're going to try and do it the old-fashioned way, with a pig bonfire. In order to preserve the meat, to salt it uh, and smoke it, we need to get all this hair off, leaving the skin intact. Probably have to scold around the ears and things to get the last bit. I, I think I'll move back a bit. <laughs> He's catching fire. Excellent. This is a first. I've never seen this before. I must admit it's uh, something different. We do it uh, by hot water, the traditional way. It's all done by machine, I suppose. We, we boil it and scold the ear off. Um, I've seen it done with um, gas blow torches before my father used to do that. Uh, it's a different way altogether, this is. God, there's quite a lot of heat coming off this fire at the moment. Pretty much cleared that back ridge, which is good. Let's see if can we push him on the... That's it. Give him a second or two. 
Yeah, I think, apart from that bit around the chin, I think we turn him over again, yeah. Go on, you heavy man. Oh. It seems to be working quite well at the moment. Um, the hair's coming off. The only thing is to try and get that balance between getting the hair off and starting to cook him. We don't want to cook him, we just want to singe the hair off at this stage. But I think it's working. With so much left to do to get the cow shed finished, Alex and Fonz crack on with wattling the front wall. They're making good progress. You're slightly higher at this end. Um, no, maybe not, actually. Maybe not. I've been trying to alternate. Well, uh, you start fat in one end and, and th yeah. Yeah, fat in that end. At the end of a long day, there's still much to be done. With a dead pig weighing in at over 100 kilos, just shifting it takes real effort. Gotta get on the table now. <laughs> He's not helping, is he? Okay, ready? Uh, two, three. three. Oh, I'm in the way. All right, all right, all right. All right two, two, three. Oh, oh shh. That's oh. it. On you. Well done. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> get out of that bucket. <laughs> yes. Another November morning in the valley, and the working day begins at dawn. There's no such thing as nine to five on a farm. So we finished the wattling late last night. Um, we've, com we've completed all that, that part of the, the wall, but we need to weatherproof it. And to do so, what we're gonna use is um, a daub, which we're making out of um, dung here, manure, clay, which we brought up from Triangle Field, and some chaff as well, some, some wheat. So the ratios are one of dung, yep. three to four of clay. That's the yep. idea. Um, this spade is it's a lot heavier than your average garden spade of today. However, I mean, the weight, it's all in the head. So that means you've got a lot of actual force. To preserve the pork, the skin needs to be clean for salting. So all of the soot from the fire has to be scrubbed off. Well, he's never going to be as white as if we'd scalded him like they do modern pigs, but, but then he's not the same breed as no. modern pigs. No, so. he's a darker animal to begin with. It's going in quite well. All I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to press it in, just to try and get it in between the wands and the rods. So there's no gaps, no air spaces in between. Your mind kind of switches off to the fact that you're handling, well, cow dung. Um, because also it's become a substance in its own right. It's actually starting to hurt the hands just because this is so cold. It's almost, it's almost freezing. And um, the straw is, is rough and these, these rods are rough and uh, it's, it, the clay is quite gritty. So you, you're just rubbing your hand across a cold, sandpapery surface. If I release around the other, the, I might, um, I, I think can you can find get joint, the vertebra. Find the joint between While a professional the slaughterman took care of the kill, 400 years ago, yeah, it was the farmer's wife who would have done most of the actual butchering. Pull him. Hey. There we are. And we have one head. head. Over to you, I think. Gosh, but man, a load of blood. Oh. Well, you can see how much meat there is on a, on a head. Lots and lots at the back. Um, also at the cheeks. That's often thought to be the nicest piece, that, that little bit there. I might souse them, actually, in a pickle. That's particularly nice. Once properly salted and smoked, a pig like this might well have lasted a family of six for about three months. Everything from the brain to the trotters would have been processed and eaten. The special recipe daub mix has worked well on the wattle wall. Applied from both sides, it is beginning to form into a solid protective layer. Thankfully, we've almost finished daubing, so it means I'm going to be able to go and wash my hands and get them warm again. I've tried applying it with tools, 
but you just can't you can't feel the wattle underneath you can't compress it into the um into the cracks it's taken us a lot less time than we actually thought hasn't it alex no it's actually, it's actually been remarkably quick and it's, it's remarkably sturdy as well i mean it's this yeah when, when this dries this is not going anywhere it's going to be solid mm. absolutely solid i mean it's certainly windproof and rainproof which yeah. which was the objective It's not just the pig and cow shed that need finishing. Stuart and Chloe have got to get in the very last of the fruit harvest, the meddlers. A crop never seen today on supermarket shelves because they have to appear rotten before they're ready to eat. That's not started to rot yet. So you pick them at that stage, absolutely hard, like a golf ball. If you were to try and bite into that now, it tastes absolutely foul, you know, worse than eating crab apples. I've got one here. It's already ripened off, bletted. See how squidgy that is? Look at that. I'm going to eat this. Yeah, just squeeze it till it bursts and all the goo will come out from the inside. Oh, that looks vile. Perfect, that's in prime condition. Oh. It's got that same sort of broken down uh, texture that you get with a sort of thoroughly cooked apple. Slightly, slightly grittier, but um, very yeah. smooth. <laughs> That one wasn't ripe. Mm. They're much better rotten. That's why Shakespeare refers to things being as rotten as a meddler. Mm -hmm. You know, it's properly matured and um, rotted. They're so ripe, they should come off really fast, this lot. Oh. Oh. In many ways, you miss out on many of the finest foods nowadays, everything from sort of fine cheeses through, because good food quite often is naturally rotted to get to perfection. Those meddlers that are already rotten need to be sorted for eating. The rest have to be stored indoors for several weeks, left in a dark corner to fester into maturity. Alex and Fonz's wattle and daub wall is now down to the very finishing touches. It has taken three days of work. Right, I've, I've finished. This, finished. This is finished, yeah. Yeah, all the cracks. I'm pretty much happy with everything in there. This is near perfection, as we're oh, going to get. That's excellent. A genuine 17th century wall, all made from materials on the farm. So we've got the hazel, the cow shit, and all the clay. The and, the, and of course the chaff, yeah, the straw. Yeah. It's done. It Brilliant. is. You happy? I'm, I'm happy, yeah. I'm going to be happy when I get the shit off my hands. Yeah, come on, let's go and wash our hands. <laughs> The valley sees another day, and preparations indoors are underway for the epic pork banquet ahead. We're salt scrubbing at the moment. A little bit of salt on the table, scrub it fairly dry, and then rinse it off and sluice it all away. And it, it sterilises the surface. Even if um, people don't know about germs, right from the Stone Age, everybody's known that if you're not clean and sensible about how you cook food, people get ill. It was my grandmother who taught me to salt tables. When she was a girl, she was really, really cross because the first four of her um, sort of home economics cooking lessons at school, four of them were on how to scrub a table before they allowed her anywhere near food. That looks better, doesn't it? Make sure you always go with the grain, won't you? Right. With the cow shed's front wall finished, all that remains is the roof. Professional thatcher Keith Paynes has returned to the farm to oversee its completion. The bracken undercoat that went on last month has held up well and is providing a good base for the weathering coat of straw now going on top. Yeah, thanks, Alice. All right. Now, this is very dirty and messy because basically it's unprocessed. It is really the stubble left at the end of harvest because the most important thing was the, was the grain, the top end of the material. It's full of rubbish, it's full of all flare, leaf and flag. There's even a few ears in it, and because it's not been thrashed, there's all grain and everything in there. To clean the surface, it's this very crude comb, which is made up of a piece of hazel split in the middle, some forged nails, and then tied together. And it literally just pulls the leaf and the flag and any rubbish out of the coat surface. And not only that, it's also combing the material all in the same direction, so you actually get a better water flow off of the thatch. With the surfaces thoroughly scrubbed, cooking can begin in earnest. And a number of pork dishes are on the menu. 
having killed a pig, we should be eating him. <laughs> we can start with all the awful things because they won't keep, they've got to be eaten straight away. I've got the um, liver here, part of which I'm going to use to make a hog's liver pudding. Um, the trotters as well I want to do today um, because when we were singeing the pig I forgot to put paste around his feet and they did catch a little bit. The scraps of the meat I shall make up into sausages um, and put them inside the intestines. And I've cleaned some of them out, not all yet, but um, there we are, lovely, lovely, lovely intestines, all washed out. A team of professional thatchers would normally take two weeks to finish a cow shed like the one here in the valley. So far, it's taken our team of specialists six weeks under Keith's tuition. 400 years ago, some farmers' wives might well have had access to cookery books. Handwritten texts survive as well as more widely published works. The recipe we're following um, today for this hog's liver pudding is in this lovely little book here. It's, um, well, it was written anonymously, published in 1589 in London. There we are. To make white puddings of the hog's liver, um, you must parboil the liver and beat it in a mortar and then strain it with cream and put there two five yolks of eggs and the white of two eggs and grate half a half penny loaf of light bread and put it there too with small raisins and dates, cloves, mace, sugar, saffron and the suet of beef. Well, is saffron a bit expensive? Sa well, all that last little lot is pretty expensive. For, for a farmhouse, you know, you might have a little bit once or twice a year, but not for an everyday thing. So I'm not going to use those um, expensive imported ingredients. I'm going to replace them with just herbs out of the garden. Then take your guts, clean washed, and stuff them with the foresaid stuff. Then boil them. That done, serve them forth. So that's what we should be doing. <laughs> Right, we're now ready to fix the thatch onto the roof by using our hazel spars or pegs. And basically these are then twisted. They have to be twisted and not bent, and that's the knack to it. You basically twist it into a hairpin. It's an incredibly difficult thing to start to learn, but once you've got the knack of it, you'll be twisting tree trunks. I'll find you an easy one, Alex. Easy one? Yeah. You start off with the, th the smaller uh, sticks because it's just technique, really. But if you've got a fat one, you end up never being able to do it. Okay. Try another, another little technique of doing it, some people, is double thumbs on the back of the bark yeah. and then pushing hands away from each other. Right. <laughs> Go on. I've, I've, tried, I've, tried, <laughs> I've tried quite a few of these and I keep breaking them and I'm worried that I'm just going to end up breaking them all. But how many have I... How yeah. many have I got to do, Keith? You'll be looking at about 3,000 by the time I finish this room. 3,000? <laughs> yeah, about 3,000. I'll put the rest of that on. Squeegee. <laughs> squeegee, Once the liver is chopped and herbs added, they need to be wrapped in a cloth to be parboiled. The liver is then left to bubble in a cauldron while the herbs infuse. Don't bend. No, no, I'm twisting, twisting. This is really hard work. This is, I can't, I mean, it's just not budging. <laughs> 3,000. <laughs> and relax. <sighs> yeah. Red, red raw. Cheers, Keith. Rub it in. With the liver cooking over the fire, Scraps of the pork need to be pounded into sausage meat. It says in the recipe to bray it in a mortar, which just means beat the living daylights out of it until you've got this sort of consistency. I'm going to take the skins now. How does this work? Well, basically, you open it up and you stuff it in. That's it. Just keep going. You can be really quite forceful with it. I mean, it's, you know, it is intestine, it's used to having things stuffed down it, if you see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the stubble weed is compacting down well onto the roof. Combined with the bracken undercoat, there will be some 18 inches of thatch protecting the cow shed. Once the liver's parboiled, it's just a case of finely chopping it and then adding the remaining ingredients. Some eggs, and a good dollop of cream. 
When it was parboiling, all those little herbs in amongst the liver, of course, the flavour has gone right into the liver. So it should have a, a really good flavour. I think that's about ready. More sausage skin stuffing! Just a minute. It's... It feels sort of... It's in hard pieces and it's kind of squidgy and slimy and... Actually, it's really starting to look like uh, one long piece of pig poo now. <laughs> Grief girl! <laughs> <laughs> Pig's intestines! Oh yeah, we're in brown goo! Really well. Lovely! Do you think anybody's actually going to eat this? I am. Finish with it. <laughs> so we're just putting the finishing touches on now. This is literally the last wad that's got to go on. These are the external fixing for the stubble thatch. There's several of them running across now, about every eight inches. So we've got two spars to put in now. These have got to go in uphill so the water doesn't course down them. So, can we have the last spar, Alex? There we go. Marvellous. Perfectly twisted. I hope I never have to twist another spar as long <laughs> as I live. <laughs> in we go. Last one going in. Nicely uphill. Find the holdings. It's quite a nice bit of bite when you drive them in. In with your hand. Yep. Nicely firm. Excellent. And we're done. <laughs> OK. It's the moment of truth. Well, the moment of truth will be when it rains, but I just want to see what it looks like. Crowning sense of achievement. I think we just need to stand back a bit, make sure the rods are where we want them, and uh, yeah, good one. It really is not going to need any major work. I hope for probably six, seven years. It's certainly many centuries since people actually process cereal crops with the stubble left in the field, so they cut for thatching. But to actually work with it, it's been quite amazing. I've surprised myself with how, how much of my modern skill really is still associated with three, four, five hundred years ago. This is, this is the first time I've, um, I've done any thatching at all and um, obviously starting off with the bracken, the bracken coat, I did um, half of the barn with the, the gads and tying it down and making sure it was all compact enough. And the roof has turned out ten times better than I thought it would. I thought it'd look a bit shaggy, a bit untidy, but it's really firm and compact. I think we've got as close to a, a Tudor-style uh, cow shed as we possibly could. I, mean, I know it's our interpretation of it, but this is, well, I think this is damn close. I feel like I've really achieved something and, and really, really enjoyed it, it has to be said. I, I hope all jobs on the farm are going to be like that because I certainly now, you know, if I get a, a building, I'm going to be thatching it. I'll rip off the tile roof <laughs> and throw some thatch on it because it's just, it's such a great thing to do though. It's such a, you know, a great job to have as well, so. It's going to have a beer. I think it's a good idea. Excellent. We can gloat tomorrow. <laughs>